Joe DeRosa? Yes. You're live on the program, sir. And is that you? It certainly is, and we're uh, we're live. Uh, yes. I know, I know we're live. Can you hear me okay? I'm actually in my car, and I'm parked on the street, and I'm wearing my shitty Apple headphones. Headset. Yeah. Can, is, it, is the connection okay? Yes, I hear you fine. I hear you fine. Okay. Perfectly. All right, Joe. Well, I watched, yeah. I watched your appearance on uh, Joe Rogan, who I, I adore. I love Joe, Joe Rogan. Uh, and uh-huh. it came off like uh, you, after being friends with me for, for as long as we have and really hanging out and not just, you know, radio station friends and shit like that, that you took what you read and heard secondhand and decided to make a decision to shun me based on that instead of getting in touch with me and asking me, you know, hey, Anthony, what did you do that show for? Hey, Anthony, why would you say that on Twitter? Uh, what's it, what about these other t- topics that you're covering? Hey, Ferguson, you said this. What a, instead of one word, you decide to 16-year-old girl not follow me anymore on Twitter, which is hilarious, uh, and, and then go on Rogan's show and give me shit. Well, I uh, I can explain to you where I was coming from with that, All and right. you know, and so, number one, first and foremost, that was not what my intention was to do. There was no part of me that was like, I'm going to go on Rogan's show and give Anthony shit today, and when I, that wasn't what I was trying to do. Uh, now, here's the thing, Ant. I, I, I'm totally 110 percent open to discussing this. Yeah, but. I keep getting the same note, if you will, on Twitter from people going, you're a bitch, you're making it personal. It's and then out of the other side of their mouth, they're saying, why didn't you talk to Anthony? So it's like, well, which is it? Is it not allowed to be personal or is it I should have been personal and talked to, to Anthony? Well, there's, so, there's personal, which is getting on the phone and talking to me would be making it personal. That would be me and you, me and you talking about it, uh, you know, personally, man to man. Uh, Twitter, uh, uh, don't uh, put any, first of all, why? Why are you putting so much credence in what the people on Twitter say? That isn't a reflection of me or you or anything else, but, but, but the people of Twitter. You know how that goes? We've talked about it for, for, since the inception of Twitter. No, I, I, I know that. And I'm not, I guess I'm not putting credence on it in the sense of like, oh, it's bothering me and it's getting to me. I'm just like, you know, look, to be fair, Jim kind of echoed that sentiment today on, on Opie and Jimmy. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of keep, my point isn't to bring up Twitter. My point is to bring up, I'm sort of repeatedly hearing this concept of like, well, you made it personal on the Rogan show yet you didn't talk to your friend. And I'm like, okay, well, it's either got to be personal or not personal. So from a per- so here's my point. Yeah. From a personal standpoint, this is what I felt. I felt that I did reach out to you a few times. I felt that I didn't hear back from you a few times. I felt that you and I have never really had a phone relationship uh, and you and I, after all the years of our friendship, have kept it pretty fucking light. Oh, yeah. Have kept it pretty fucking light. Now, here's the other thing I know about our friendship. When we have disagreed on mainly the thing I remember most disagreeing with you about was, was stuff about guns. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, look, you, you, you would, like, yell, and it would, you'd get angry at me. And, like, I don't care that you got angry. I, I wasn't like, oh, why is he yelling at me? But I was just like, all right, man, like, when Anthony and I talk about that shit, it turns into, like, a big screaming match. So these are the factors that were influencing, like, okay, well, how do I approach Anthony about this and what do I do? But I still shot you those texts, man. You, you know the texts I sent you, and I said, hey, man, I'm sorry you're going through this. I'm sorry this is happening. I hope you're okay. Thank you for all the years yeah. of laughter and yeah. everything. And I said on Rogan's show yesterday, yeah. I am fully aware that I owe most of my career to Opie and Anthony. I was very clear about that. That's something that's not getting mentioned anywhere mm. by anybody. All right. So I am, I am 110% grateful for that and indebted for that. I, I, there's no part of me that takes that for granted. I, I... Now, uh, if I could go just go, I'm hearing everything you're saying, and you're you're skirting the actual issue here, 
which is uh, you, you reached out. You said, hey, Anthony, uh, I, I hope things are going well for you, uh, things like that. And, and that's all well and fine. We, we had a – we didn't have a phone call relationship. I don't have a phone call relationship with anybody. My, ask my brother. I never even talked to him on the phone. It's all text, text. We would have funny text exchanges with the capital letters and the dice shit. Uh, every Absolutely. so often, and it, it was hilarious and stuff. But, but my issue isn't with uh, we didn't text or tweet or get back. It's it's you never when when it got serious and and you decided to uh, to uh, literally shun me for fear of losing your black friends. Uh, you you uh, didn't even reach out to me and ask for a clarification on what I was doing. Um, well. Well, I, and I'm, I'm not honestly. I'm not trying to skirt. I'm just. I, I give too much backstory. I'm a wordy. I'm a wordy guy, and I realize that. So, so let me let me get to the the point I was trying to get to slowly, uh, and and try to speed it up. My point is this: after we had texted a couple times, and I said, "Hey, man, let's grab a beer or something." And honestly, Aunt, when I wrote that to you, mm -hmm. my intention was I need to sit down and have a drink with this guy and try to figure out where he's coming from because I don't understand where he's coming from right now. All right. Uh, and I don't agree with it, but let me try to see if, if he can shed some light on it or something and blah, blah, blah. Then I started to see the other stuff. and, and or, or excuse me. I'm sorry. Let me, let me correct that. Then when you – started to call the dogs off and this is where i'm getting called a bitch and all this stuff and whatever but when you started to call the dogs off of guys like burr and you were saying nice things about other people that had reached out to you so these fucking pests would leave them the fuck alone and you didn't do that for me i was like all right again i wasn't personally offended i was like all right, that's just, I guess, a reflection of where we stand. Maybe we're not as good of friends as I thought we were. Uh, you, were really, you were really jumping to conclusions there, Joe, because the truth of the matter is uh, the reason I wasn't able to hang out and have a beer with you and I probably, uh, in error, didn't uh, say, hey, Joe reached out to me and, and it was cool, is I was trying to get this fucking thing up and running with Keith in, in 30 days after getting my ass thrown uh, out of a, a very good job and uh, a lot of things slipped my mind. You could ask everybody that I have a personal relationship with how uh, distant I have been the past fucking month, um, month and a half now or whatever it is, two months, uh, as this project's going because I l literally don't have any time to do anything anymore. The, the two hours that I'm on is the, the two hours that I, I'm not trying to do something else as far as making this better and make it work. So uh, I, 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 okay. I'm sorry you, did, you, know, you didn't know that, and, and you shouldn't have known that. How the fuck would you? But that's the reason a lot of neglect got thrown around uh, on my part as far as that goes. I'll, 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 I'll fess up to that, that I probably should have uh, at least written you back and let you know what was going on. Uh, but again, to go on Joe's show, and I know you didn't intend on doing it. Joe Rogan's very good with relaxing people and, and, and getting people to talk openly and honestly. And I, I love that about him. Uh, but it was obviously on your mind and bothering you enough to, I didn't even notice till today, by the way, or yesterday, by the way, that you had unfollowed me uh, on Twitter. Uh, but it bothered you enough to have done that and to have uh, talked about it um, very passionately on Joe's show about how, you know, I was pretty much, uh, garbage that needed to be, uh, you know, tossed out. I didn't. I don't look at it as. I don't look at it in any way. And 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 by the way, and I, I, I'm saying this. I'm saying this very honestly to you, because I, I was a little upset today that like there there were one or two comments that Jim had made on the show this morning about like. What I did seemed very calm and planned or, so, or something along those lines. I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing what he said. Mm -hmm. And I was a little offended by that uh, because I felt like it sounded like what I did was I sat there for weeks and said, you know what, I'll show Kumia he's a piece of shit and I'll get him good. That's not what it was. I don't think not what it was. I don't it think was, it was that planned. I don't, I don't think, uh, regardless of what Jimmy might have thought, and, uh, you know, that, that's what his opinion was. Uh, you know, I, I can't base what I'm thinking on what Jimmy, uh, his opinion was. But I think part of I know it, that. I think, I think for a while, 
you've been um, trying to showboat and impress for maybe people like Andy Kindler uh, and, and taking uh, that stance on it uh, and, and maybe not checking with me to, to see what really happened because it's a little more convenient for you to just say, yeah, fuck that asshole. Uh, you know, no. hey, do you see these assholes, Andy? You see what they're fucking saying about me too now? It kind of puts you no, in the same camp. No, camp. That's, that's not true at all. That's not true at all. And, 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 and I mean, if we're going to talk about, like, assumptions being made about, about one another, I'm offended that so many people are, 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 uh, that people are assuming that that's what I'm doing. Like, I'm so needy and desperate somehow that, like, I moved out to Hollywood and suddenly – I'm terrified and need the acceptance of certain people. It's like I stuck up for Andy. I didn't even, Anthony, I didn't even realize why people were attacking Andy. I wasn't at Montreal this year. I didn't even put those pieces together mm -hmm. until well, well, well into my defense of him. I was defending him because people were seeing that he and I were palling around back and forth on Twitter and, and writing, tweeting me horrific shit about him. And I was going, dude, he's fucking hilarious. I love the guy. Again, the tweet and, thing. Huh. And that slowly morphed into your, your you know, your, and then I was like, oh, oh now I get it. They're, they're mad at him because I found out he said this stuff about it. So that's what that was. Mm -hmm. That's all that was. Uh, and I... Yeah. Look, let's get to let's get to the core of it, man. Yeah. Because I feel like we could go back and forth about like I should have done this and I misinterpreted that, or you, you know, you were busy or whatever. At the core of it, I felt like it got to a point when I saw some of your tweets about Ferguson, yeah. and I saw that you had gone on that white nationalist program. I was like, okay, I'm clear. Like, we've reached a point where I so disagree with where Anthony's coming from with this stuff that it would be tough for us to even maintain a friendship. Do you? So honestly, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna slide back from it, and that's the end of it. And I was like, what good? Let's say we did talk on the phone. What was it gonna do? Well, what, like, maybe not on the phone, but, but yeah, going you know out I mean? or something would have been a good idea. But, but. Uh, well, would it have what, been a good idea? Uh, sorry, well, like like going go, up, going out for a beer, like you said, like that. Not a phone call or anything like that. Hanging out and and you, I mean, we have been hanging out for a while, and like you said, we've kept it light. But was there ever an indica? Do you think I'm a Nazi? Do you think I'm a Nazi or an anti-Semite or truly a racist that doesn't want to be around black people? Do you honestly believe that? Man, I never, ever, ever in a million years did believe it but when i saw when, when it got to and this is what i said on rogan yesterday when it got to the point of you going on that show and then tweeting the stuff you tweeted about ferguson i was just like what the fuck is anthony doing i was it was beyond anything i had ever heard you say dude it I don't was think, beyond it i don't think anything i tweeted about ferguson by the way was so far out there i was tweeting an opinion on a, a, a case that hadn't even been investigated yet when they had already convicted the police officer. So I was just talking about that. I talked about the horrid behavior of uh, some of the protesters. And then I talked about how bad most of what I talked about was how fucked the media was for putting the circus on and playing everybody like puppets. Uh, th that was my, my biggest argument about it. I don't think I was saying anything like, let's get the water hoses and fucking German shepherds down in Ferguson. I wasn't saying anything like that. If you've noticed over the years, whenever I've talked about racial subject matter, it's usually with a very calculated, uh, logical, passionate but backed up with statistics and whatnot. I don't just go off on racist tirades about let's start getting nooses and, and uh, shit like that. I just don't do that. Uh, whenever well, I, I do tweet anger and words like animal and savage, it's because I'm seeing animalistic or savage behavior. And when I tweeted about that girl in, uh, in uh, Times Square that hit me, it's because she fucking hit me, Joe. 
That's why I, I, I was that. that angry about it, and that's why I used the language I did. She was acting like a fucking uncaged animal, and that's what I called her, regardless of her fucking race. But people like you and Kindler and a bunch of other liberals just see more color than I ever do and say, well, she's black, he's white, he used the word animal, racist, and then it goes all over yeah. Gawker and the other shit sites, and then people like you and Kindler and the other liberal assholes pick it up, and I'm the fucking douchebag without one personal call or or anything to to let me explain uh, my side. Ed, yeah. Ed, 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 if you're gonna if you're gonna ask me to have more of an open mind as to assume you're racist, have have the equal open mind with me, liberal. Come on, dude. Come on, man. You're, you're gonna uh, call me a liberal asshole now. I'm I mean, saying. It, when, I, have, when have I ever not? When have I never? When have I ever not taken the un PC stance on something? When have I ever not spoken my mind and and held to my opinion? Here's what's killing me about this, dude. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me respond to two things you just said. Number All one, right. had you said, had you said, and Dino Hughley said the same fucking thing on the radio. Had you said her, I wouldn't have had a problem with it. You didn't say her. You said they. You said that community. And once once this goes to that and th and. This person turns into them. Mm -hmm. Now you're speaking in massive generalities, and that's when it starts to sound racist. No, you know what? Okay? Why? Okay, uh, let me answer that because I know the context I wrote that in. When I say they, it doesn't go from uh, her to everybody. They is more than her. It's not everybody, but it's everybody that jumps to fucking violence which there is a propensity of in the black community. I've talked about how community leaders, uh, religious leaders, politicians have talked about. There's been rallies about violence in the community. We have to silence the violence. That's the they I was talking about. People that instantly jump to violence because your shoe is stepped on on the subway or someone's taking a picture of you. That's the they. The they didn't include a fucking Wall Street executive uh, African-American that uh, I, I, I look at with a family and responsibilities and a job, and I'm going, well, fuck him too. Put him in the they category. I never fucking said or meant that. The context of what I say has been twisted around. It, it makes me fucking nauseous. Okay. okay, okay. Listen, if that's your argument, then that's your argument. But when I saw you repeatedly have the opportunity to explain what you even just said now publicly, and your response was just, I didn't say anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. I it was like, dude, dude, like, like that, that's where I start. And, 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 and when, when, I'm sorry, dude, but listen, I said yesterday, I said yesterday that when you went on that fucking tirade on Twitter, that I gave you, I was like, he's mad. And this is a little nuts to me right now, but he's mad, and I'm just going to step back and see how this plays out. He's mad because and, he was assaulted. That's the part they leave out of every fucking story. But, okay, continue. And th Listen, I said you were assaulted yesterday. Yeah. I never said you weren't assaulted. I know. I just like I, to bring it up because a lot of people leave it out of their uh, little articles and whatnot. But my point is, is like, is like, if you're, if you're, it, it, the way it came across, if you're driving, okay, let's let's change it to like a thing. Like, let's say you're driving, and this better not be the like scenario, that pizza. This better not be like that pizza parlor analogy. I love the pizza parlor analogy. I fucking I thought hated it was a good it. analogy. Oh my god, huh? I hated it. <laughs> All right, Why? and because it stunk. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm driving. Right. Anyway, let's say you were driving. And a, a Mexican dude blows through a light or cuts you off or whatever and almost causes you to get into an accident. Right. And you start screaming, you fucking asshole Mexican. Yeah. And, and whatever. You fucking Mexican cocksucker, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, the person in the car with you might go, all right, he's saying a little crazy shit right now. But Jesus Christ, that was dangerous and he's angry. I'm going to let him slide on the anger factor for a few minutes here. He's behind the wheel, whatever. But. If you start screaming, that's the problem with that community, is they fucking do this and they all do that. 
that's when it starts to get confusing, yeah. and it starts to sound like, what the fuck does that one dude and his bad action and this one scenario have to do with all those other people? You're right, okay? but let's say everyone in your town, when you pull into your, your, your driveway with your freshly dented car from the Mexican, all of your neighbors have dented cars from Mexicans. Maybe that's why everyone goes, fuck, those Mexicans are running into my car all the time. Yeah, do all of your neighbors and friends have a story about getting slapped by a woman in Times Square? Absolutely as not. As far as I know, you're the only one that has that story. Absolutely not. You're absolutely right. I am the only one. Not the only one that has been assault uh, has been assaulted by a person of color. That that's for sure. Uh, not not the fact because I know other people that have been. Uh, it's not a huge number. I understand that, uh, which is you know why I still go out. And why people go out. If it, was a, if it was a crazy number, everyone would stay in their house. What, I, what I'm sure. saying is I right. was pissed off. I was assaulted by this woman. There were uh, uh, four or five other black guys that had come to the scene who uh, instantly were, were making threatening remarks to me as far as don't you put your hands on that girl, which, by the way, I wasn't even close to uh, putting my hands on her. Uh, and that's when I started with they, because it was this communal thing. All of a sudden, the girl who was smacking me in the fucking head was the victim uh, regardless. And I deemed, um, I, I assumed, and as I still do, that it was based on uh, color, that, that they were the same color as her, and uh, assumed that I was giving her shit. I don't know. Um, but uh, that's also where they came from. I was talking about the group of people that I encountered that night uh, that were, were uh, you know, had a, a propensity toward violence. And, and. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. And I, and I, say, this, I say this not to, uh, and by the way, I realize I'm a justifying asshole, and I put a disclaimer in front of everything that comes out of my fucking mouth. But I mean, it's just the way I talk. Uh, you know. I, 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 let me ask you this, dude. You explain this to me. Because you asked me earlier, Joe, do you really think I'm a racist? Do you really, really believe this? Aunt, can you explain to me? Yeah. Can you explain to me why you're the one that said this, that stuff on Twitter? Yeah. You're the one that went on Red Eye and did what you did. You're the one that went on the white nationalist radio show. Right. You're the one that tweeted what you tweeted about Ferguson. You're the one that did those things. Yeah. And somehow, somehow... I'm the fucking asshole for, for, for not going because I didn't call you or, or handle my thing in an appropriate way. It's like, why is it okay that you did all the things your ethical code told you to do and the way you need to do them, yet when anybody questions it or speaks out against it, They've wronged you, they've scorned you, and they're the fucking asshole. Well, as far as I can tell, I just acted with the same uh, vehemence and backbone that you did. It just happened to be a, a little more directed at you. Okay. Well, How am I any more wrong than, or, or wrong or right or whatever than you were? Well, I, th I think that's why it, it's on more of a personal level, but I'll get back to that. Let me get to the initial thing you, you had asked about. You, you listed sure. all these things that I was on. I don't have any regrets or I don't take back anything I say uh, aside from saying that I did tweet the initial tweets about that uh, girl in anger five minutes after and those were over the top I understand that I still um, I still feel very passionately about what I did right uh, uh, about certain issues um, I said if my uh, my what I was guilty of was tweeting about how angry I was at an individual and then in the same Twitter thread put um, social commentary in there, uh, which was very easy to take and mix up and, and put together and, and make me look very bad. I understand that was my fault. Uh, as far as Red Eye goes, I didn't do anything on Red Eye that I wasn't extremely proud of. I talked about 
Why would I be apologetic? I was so sick every day going into the Opie and Anthony show and listening to recordings of, of meaningless apologies of people that were just trying to keep their job uh, that I was then going to be that guy that I didn't mean. I didn't mean it. I, I want to apologize to the black community and the, those that I've offended. Ugh, I could never do that and have an ounce of credibility or, or self-respect left. So what I said on Red Eye, it was all, and what I, what I wrote about Ferguson on Twitter, the reason I can say those things and, and I, I shouldn't be crucified for them is because, I, like I said, they're very calculated, very um, thought out uh, opinions about uh, social situations that are going on today. I, I, again, I don't write, let's get the fire hoses like we did in 1960. I don't write shit like that. I write, I, well know you don't. I write well measured opinions on very sensitive topics. And I, I, again, I'm very proud of those too. And uh, yeah, the reason you I'm catch shit is because what I'm writing about and talking about is a giant social issue. What you did was jump on one of your friends and start fucking uh, shanking them. I didn't jump on you. Well, yeah, I you didn't kind jump of did, on you. You kind I of did, said, Joe. Maybe a little bit. A little bit. And, yeah. <laughs> look, your impressions still make me laugh. What can I say? The, uh, uh, you, look, you, you, I didn't jump. Hold on. There's two things I want to respond to. Okay. First of all, I appreciate your fire hose thing, but if you're going to say my pizza parlor analogy was shit, Please stop saying the fire hose thing. We can all agree that there are different levels of, of and ways of being racist. Racism isn't strictly defined by get out the fire hoses and the nooses. But it, but That's that the, oh. now in, in nowadays, it, whatever you say about race, you criticize the president, you're put in the same category of racist as if you did have the, the pizza or the fire hose. Well, that, listen, I don't. I don't know if I agree with that, and I think that's also a different, a very different discussion. It is, it is from what we're what, from what we're discussing. Yeah. But my point is, is like I can, I'm allowed to think somebody's racist, even though they didn't write "go get fire hoses" on Twitter. Now I say this a lot about situations and forming my opinions, and my opinion on this situation was also formed carefully. Okay, I, I didn't, I didn't knee jerk respond. Okay, if I was one of these. You know, one of the liberal assholes, as you put it, with a blog that shit on you, I would have been shitting on you the day after it happened, Anthony. And I wasn't. And I wasn't. And I don't think I shit on you yesterday. Uh, I said repeatedly, I said repeatedly that I thought of you as a friend and that I was sad that I felt that I had lost a friend because we, we were at such a different place when it came to a subject like this that I was like, I don't think I can hang out with a guy that I disagree with on this topic this much. Well, uh, what and the, all right, go ahead. The, the reason and the reason and where and by the way, dude, I'm like, I know we disagree right now. Yeah, I'm not I'm not yelling at you. No, no, like I, I I'm know. speaking passionately. Like, I, I hope like I'm like, honestly, want to have like, a very respectful discussion. I'm just passionate about this. No, no. That's so, the same thing when you were saying uh, earlier about how uh, when we talk about guns, I would start yelling. A lot of it wasn't yelling at you. I yell. I yell all the time. One of my biggest things, Jimmy would look over and start laughing because I'm just yelling. He goes and he'd mouth out. He goes, what are you yelling about? And I'm like, I don't know. And, you know, okay. still, I know I'm, okay. I'm, a, I'm a fucking guinea. And you're whatever the fuck you are, and I guess it's two people that uh, talk with their hands and uh, yell a lot. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes. So yeah, he. You know. So it, when I say I I form my opinion carefully, what I'm trying to say is that is any one of these things isolated, and maybe I didn't do a great job of uh, conveying this yesterday, but any one of these things isolated, I would have went. Man, that's fucking unfortunate, but, but all right, let's, let's see how it plays out or whatever. When it's all the things together, and quite frankly, Aunt, my breaking point was when I saw a tweet from you that said, I'm paraphrasing, it, and I don't know if it was just a tweet you wrote or you were responding to somebody, yeah. but you had written when you break, and it was about the Ferguson kid, uh -huh. when you break the law, you take your life into your own hands. And I was just like, that's, number one, painfully not true. It's just not true. All right. Uh, and number two, 
it sounds to me now. You know, and then I saw another tweet where somebody wrote to you and said, like, hey, what is your recommendation for the, recommendation for the best gun cleaning kit? And you responded with a picture of black gang members. It's like, dude, it's just where there's smoke, there's fire. And there was so much fucking smoke at that point. First of all, like, all right, all right, I hear you. But, but again... The fucking black gang members. Now, if I really wanted to piss people off, I'd have put a picture of fucking uh, Michael Brown on the uh, on the, the the tweet. But I put gang members that uh, obviously were not the the best people in society as uh, as that picture. The the other tweet about when you break the law, you take the life in your in your hands. I'm talking about everybody, and I'm talking about the snowball cascading reaction that can happen with something as simple as shoplifting. The second you decide to break the law, it could end in you or someone else being dead. It's just the nature of crime and and how people feel about it. I wasn't saying that if you steal something, you should be shot and killed. I was saying that if you decide to steal something, you better think about the future consequences. And by the future, I mean a couple of seconds, minutes, hours, a week, whatever it is. Uh, when you decide to do that, you are literally, you, you could be taking your life into your hands. That was my point. It's very hard in 140 characters to really convey everything you want in, a, in an idea. I, I, I'll, I'll say this. I, I listen. What you just said is a fair point to me, but when that point is is less worded, obviously because of the Twitter thing, okay? Uh huh. And and every time, I just felt like Ant, everything you were saying. What I'm trying to get at is, I felt like everything you were saying from the time of the the the, the Twitter the Twitter thing, the, the initial mm -hmm. Twitter thing that you got fired for. Up through and including the Ferguson stuff, it was all black. Yeah, everything yeah. kept coming back to black. Uh huh. And I was like, I just don't know how else to look at this. It it started to to me like you got fired, and you were like, I'll fucking show you now. I'll prove my point about these people. You know what? And you and the campaign was that. I, I do believe there is that type of resentment that goes into when you lose your job because uh, you feel you were unjustly made the uh, perpetrator of something, which is exactly what happened to me. I was a victim uh, of an assault on the street, and how it turned out was uh, I got fired for, for voicing my displeasure with being smacked by this bitch in the face. So... Um, when you say that, you're right. There is a certain amount of resentment that comes into play when you lose your job be, uh, because of a societal fucking bullshit PC cloud that we're all under that we now have to walk on eggshells and, and we're fucked with. Yeah, there is a certain amount of resentment toward that. And I was uh, 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 picking out uh, various um, examples that I could put uh, down of, of violence um, that is being uh, perpetrated at a disproportionate number. Yes, I did. But again, I would point these out with statistics and in a very even uh, tempered way. Uh, if you didn't like it, like, like I didn't know I had a three strikes rule with Joe DeRosa, uh, that, you know, a couple of things were okay, but I, but I passed the line of being able to be your friend anymore. And your line about how can I go to my black friends and say that I still, you know, have any contact with him was, oh, it was terrible. Who the fuck That's gives a shit what any of uh, your friends, white, black, Chinese, or whatever, have to say about who you hang out with or who you even talk to about um, uh, an issue you have with them? Yeah, Aunt, you're gonna tell me. Yeah, you're gonna tell who gives a shit. Clearly, everybody, Anthony. I spoke out against you, and I'm getting fucking hell from people about it. So clearly, people take into account how other people are going to feel about what they say about them, or 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 or, or the company they keep. You you obvious, and, and I didn't. You're talking way, Twitter Aunt, people. When I said that, yeah. But hold on a second. It's not just Twitter people. It's not just Twitter people. And when I said that. I didn't say, oh, 
oh, God, you know, I would hang out with Anthony, but it's just I'm so darn scared about what my black friends might say. I didn't say that. What I said was, Some you know, folks. when you have to honestly ask yourself, is this a problem with my black friends if I hang out with this dude? Maybe there's some actual racism happening at that point. Maybe there's That's some maybe there's some irrational thought on your part to even think that are my black friends going to have an, a problem with me talking? You tell them to go is, fuck themselves or you tell uh, me to my face like to go fuck myself or something. It's the way it was handled, Joe. It's just the way it was handled. It came off as uh, kind of, I don't know, kind of cheap and, and unfriendlike. Uh, is all. That's what I think. Nah. Well, it's it's Aunt, you're you're absolutely entitled to that opinion for obvious reasons that I don't need to state. Uh -huh. uh, I don't have a legion of people behind me that are now going to call you a cunt and a traitor every second, seven get, fucking seconds. I get enough shit, bro. Uh, Believe me, I get enough shit on uh, Twitter. <laughs> you know, I just I just think it's hilarious that. You spoke your mind about a situation uh -huh. and got shit for it, and then I spoke my mind about a situation and got shit for it, but I'm somehow getting shit from the people that supported you for how you shouldn't have gotten shit for your situation. Maybe they, like, dude, maybe they saw I had more justification in what I was saying than you did in saying what you said. May, maybe they did. Maybe they did. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. But I. I. I would say this, Aunt. Like, and and I mean this, dude. I. I think. And I, look again. I'm going to recognize the more shit that I'm going to now get for saying this. But I say this to you, dude, as somebody that honestly gives a shit about your well-being. Yeah. Like, I don't think this road is a good road. And, and, and to me, when I saw the Ferguson thing, I was like, you know what? You know what I would have thought Anthony would have said? The guy that I knew would have said, hey, this is why I'm a supporter of gun rights. So when some fucked up crooked cop shoots at you, you can defend yourself if you have to. Yikes. That's the Anthony Cumia that I knew. Maybe on that planet that uh, when Kirk beamed aboard and the transporter was bad and he beamed aboard the bad Enterprise with the Spock with the goatee, maybe that Anthony might have said it. But me, on the other hand, I it, until I found out it was a crooked cop, the more evidence that came in, the more it looked like this cop was uh, beaten in some way, shape, or form. And uh, this the guy was uh, more thug than this uh, uh, high school graduate uh, prince of uh, the city there. Uh, and, and the more that came out, uh, the more it looked like just another one of these assaults that happen. Uh, you know, you instantly say crooked cop that shoots him. It just seems, uh, why jump to that conclusion? Because he was shot in the back. Witnesses have come up and said the kid's hands were up in the air. He wasn't why shot go in the, the back. King, do you know, why go to the king? Do you know every coroner, there were three coroners that did three separate autopsies on him, and none of them have said he was shot in the back. They were all front shots and then one to the top of his head. That was it. None in the back. Uh, it also indicated that he didn't have his hands up. Uh, these are all the facts that are coming in that I, I was talking about. Um, you know, news reports two days ago said witnesses came forth two days ago and said his hands were in the air. Yeah, now, if I'm reading shitty news feeds, I don't well, know. But my point is, is that was in the news. Witnesses to that crime in that neighborhood may be embellishing things. I don't know. But when you put it together, all the witnesses with all the forensics that the grand jury is going to come up with in a few more weeks, then we can make a more educated uh, guess as to what happened in that uh, in that parking lot, but Fine. on that road. Fine. Until then, I don't see a crooked cop. What I see is a guy that intimidated, at the very least, a store owner to get away with taking stuff for free. Uh, and 15 minutes later, he was lying in the street dead. Um, and that's the facts we have. So when well, I write about Ferguson, it's not from a place of hate and racism and this and that and the other thing. I am basing it like I did with uh, the Trayvon Martin thing and everything, which I caught shit for and, and called it 100 percent accurate as far as uh, the, the trial went. And um, if you look at uh, even the, the white guy there, Pistorius, I called this fucking thing six months ago that they didn't uh, ac accuse him of a uh, uh, convict him of uh, murder charges. So... Uh, I, I really do take a lot more time 
than a lot of people think looking into these cases and getting the facts. And when I say them, they are contrary to a lot of what the liberal media puts out there. So I'm looked at as the liar. It's insane. But, well, I, go off. but, I, but I go off. Listen, in, in the interest of not digressing into a Ferguson discussion, yeah, yeah. And, and I'll just say this, like, and as much <laughs> – as much as you're saying to me right now, Joe, I felt you handled it shitty after all the stuff we've been through. Uh-huh. And after all the shit we've been through, can you think maybe for a minute yeah. that maybe you did some stuff that caused me to act in a way that I have never acted with you ever? I don't. I, I sat I, in studio with you. I sat in studio with you. Through the George Martin, uh, uh, George, whatever the fuck his name, Zimmerman, Zimmerman yeah. and Trayvon Martin debates. Yeah, I sat with you in studio while you gave your hard, hard opinions on race, on guns, on whatever. Yeah, did I ever, ever once take an opportunity? To run and throw you under some fucking bus. No, but that because that would have been very silly to do because it was uh, us talking about a subject on the radio. Why? Why would you uh, throw me under the bus uh, personally for something that I was doing uh, on the show? That would be that would have been silly. I'm saying if I'm saying if my motives. If my motives were impure, I could have done this a long time ago. I'm not. It's my point. Right. I don't. Hey. I, and I'm saying I don't think you meant to say, let me fucking throw Anthony under the bus. I just think the way you handled your distancing yourself from me uh, came off a little pissy is all. That's all. Okay. But, and what I'm asking you is can you find it anywhere in yourself right now to say, if Joe oddly distanced himself from me in this pissy way that doesn't align with the friendship we've had and the behaviors that he's exhibited over the last six years or whatever it's been, maybe maybe a little of this is me and my behavior and freaking him out a little bit. I can understand or, you being like, freaked out. Uh, again, especially from the initial tweets that I put out about that bitch in Times Square. But uh, after that... I don't think anything I've said or tweeted about uh, race relations in this country has been any off kilter of what I've been saying on the air for years uh, about uh, a very sensitive issue is, is all. That's that's what I'm saying. I, I don't know why all of a sudden uh, it, it all added up in your head uh, to, to being this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You, you don't. You don't you don't think any of the stuff you, you don't think going on a white nationalist radio show was was a was just a tick further down the road than than anything you had ever yeah. expressed on the air before? Joe, I could see absolutely I could see you going like, "Wow, what the fuck is he doing?" But I would have loved a, a call or text going, "Wow, what the fuck are you doing?" instead of just assuming that I was like, "Cool, I'm on this show." Uh, like I said, Keith was doing my bookings. I didn't even know. There was a list of 20 podcasts that I was doing that I would just call up and be on. Uh, I had no idea what most of their subject was. In the six uh, or, or four weeks that I had to get this fucking show up and running, I wanted to get my name out there as much as possible. So uh, the due diligence in, in researching some of these shows probably took a back seat to me just wanting the Anthony Cumia show being out there uh, on the uh, digital airwaves. Um, it, 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 was that a mistake? Apparently, with uh, quite a few people, it was. Um, but, again, I could have cleared that up with you in seconds. You know? I think. You're a well, reasonable guy. It I- was... It, it- it was it was the the, the the tough thing the tough thing for me to because I, I as of today before you just said that for the first time heard the explanation of like well he didn't know what kind of show it was yeah. and my gut reaction to that was or my knee jerk reaction to that was yeah but Anthony is so well read and the support the support to justify everything else he's done has been he's well read. Here are statistics. He's a guy that researches the argument. Yet, when here's this thing where you can kind of get nailed to the cross on it, all of a sudden it's like, well, he didn't know. No, it's not. You know what I mean? It's it's not. I I didn't know. I knew they were a far right uh, show, but I didn't I didn't know about a white nationalist uh, show. I I honestly was ta- making calls to podcasts outside, uh, one after another. 
just fucking it was just another just another fucking uh podcast but you know that again no excuse i'm not sitting here trying to excuse it i was on it i spoke my piece about uh subject matter that they seem to enjoy um and what have you but you you've known me longer than to know that i'm fucking you know the next hitler <laughs> i don't think i don't think you think i'm uh starting a uh, national socialist movement or anything I, I would hope not. I would hope not. You know, it's, you it's look, not, see. I, I, I'll say that I'll say this. Um, as much as I d disagree with the stuff you've said and the stance or approach you've taken with it, uh, if, if 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 it was more appropriate somehow for me to. And I'm saying this without fully understanding it. Okay. But if in some way it was somehow the right thing for me to do or the ethical thing for me to do to call you and come at you head on about, I don't like the shit you're saying. I don't think I can hang out with you anymore and right. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And if that's what I truly should have done in the greater cosmic law of things, then I should have done that, and I didn't realize it. Well, I don't think you should have I, come at me and said, like, I can't hang out with you. I think a, a calling or, or something and saying, hey, dude, I heard this and that, and I heard you said this. Uh, what's the deal? I would have been like, oh, fuck, yeah. And I would have explained to you what that was, and I think you might have come away with a different uh, outlook on the whole thing. Uh, but, you know, Joe Rogan. It's Joe Rogan's show. <laughs> That's fine. Say what? But then, you know, going on Joe Rogan's show instead and uh, voicing it there, um, you know. Well, just the only reason I voiced it on Joe Rogan's show was because we started discussing it. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then you're having an honest discussion and one thing leads to another and it all comes out yeah. in the fucking watch. I, I, you know, like, like, as I said, there was no when I left there yesterday, there was no part of me that was like, oh, I just aired my dirty personal laundry with Anthony. Yeah. I felt like, honestly, you would have heard it and been, and again, maybe I'm thinking of you on the fucking Kirk planet or whatever. I thought you would have heard it and been like, hey, what are you going to do? The Rosa didn't agree with me. All right, I get it. This is how I feel. He doesn't agree, and all right, that's it, man. I, don't, I, 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 don't rarely, I rarely do that. Uh, there's, I, I, I was saying the other day, I don't have any friends that I've stopped being friends with for uh reasons of non-agreement or shit like that it's usually you know i moved or i left a job or that's how i've i've like ended friendships there's only been one uh danny ross that ended because you know someone turned into a fucking asshole uh and depending on who you ask it's the other one but uh that's fair enough but uh i don't i don't do things like that i don't just go ah fuck it you know joe doesn't agree with me fuck it i would have wanted to uh talk it out and stuff and, uh, you know, if, if we can wrap it up, because Bailey J is here, and she's going to rip uh, ass hair out of uh, Jon Stewart's uh, ass. We actually have that happening on the show today. Jon Stewart, the Daily Show Jon Stewart? No, some Irish guy, Jon Stewart. That, uh, oh, okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. But, uh, <laughs> but if, uh, if you're open to it, Joe, and you're in New York, I would like to... Uh, have you uh, come on the show, or at least we go out and grab a beer and uh, have a couple of drinks and then uh, uh, duke it out like Irish brothers? Look, I, I would... If I you're would black like friends, it's okay. I would like to continue the discussion with you, because I think you both probably have more to say, yeah. and I would like to continue the discussion, honestly. Is that, a, is that a date? I think we have a date. It's like fucking the love connection over here. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's a maybe we could go uh, have some of that pizza at that pizza parlor, that imaginary pizza parlor you talked about. It was a great analogy. <laughs> it was, stand by it. It stunk. All right, stand Joe. With Joe, the pizza parlor analogy. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> Joe, thanks though for uh, calling and, and getting the uh, the dialogue started and shit like that. And uh, and honestly, not just as a, a fucking bullshit thing. We could we could all just lay back on Joe until me and Joe get together and talk a little more, and then maybe I'll come back on and say he was an asshole and we should destroy him. But in the meantime, uh, <laughs> let's just all fucking back off a little bit, you know. I appreciate you having me on and having like you know a calm and honest debate about this. I really do. Yeah, no problem. You got any plug sure. you got any plugs or anything? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead. 
<laughs> One thing I took away from Opie, <laughs> that hang-up is fucking funny. 